everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Yummy Baron of Yummy Carl Shilji and today's tutorial is this cute granny square that I called Yummy Dollette Dress and Top that has a ribbon for a sleeve and it's perfect for anything that you want to pair it with. With a massive mesh bow at the back for more drama and cute styling. Also, this tutorial will come with a dress version of this bandeau top. So if you continue watching till the end, you will be able to follow this cute dress tutorial with a big mesh bow. So this pattern, the bandeau top and the granny square dress will also be released in my Etsy shop as a written pattern. So please check out the description box below for the details of the written pattern. So if you like my content that talks about crochet and styling our crochet pieces, please smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. These are the materials that we will be needing for this tutorial. A lightweight yarn or category 3, a medium or category 4 acrylic. Hook sizes 5.5mm hook and 4mm hook. A ribbon for your sleeve a scissors, a stitch markers, a couple of them, a tape measure so we can measure ourselves, a darning needle. And these are the stitches that we will be needing. So I have here my first row of the granny square attached to each other and this time I use a different method to attach the granny square. This is the single crochet front and back loop. Okay, so as you can see, I hope it's clear enough, this is single crochet front loop back loop. And I have here another six granny squares that we will be attaching together after we put the border, which is the black acrylic. So in total, I only need 12 granny squares for my size small or 34B in the bust area. And make sure if you have the bando, it's not touching at the back. Each end of your granny square shouldn't be touching at the back okay? when stretched. So we have to add the ribbon. So this time I already have here my granny squares, please refer to this video or in the link in the description box below for the complete tutorial of how to make this granny square. So when you're done with the granny squares, come back to this video and we will add the single crochet borders for this square. In this particular tutorial, we will be using a lightweight or category 3 yarn. Your square should measure 9 cm or 3.5 inches. So now that you're done with the granny squares, we will make a black border using a single crochet. Attach your acrylic medium weight yarn anywhere around your square. Pull a yarn. So I'm using here a lightweight yarn and a 4 millimeter hook. Pull a yarn and secure that yarn and this time chain of one and we will single crochet around. So our borders is only single crochet in each stitches. Try to bury the tail as you go. So now that we reach the first corner or the corner of our granny squares, we have to put three single crochet into the three chain space of your granny square. So three single crochets in the three chain space. So there you go, we have the three single crochet. So continue your single crochet in each stitches around your granny squares, but make sure to always put three single crochets in your chain three space from the previous round. And you may of course bury the tail or extra yarns as you crochet your way around.
three single crochet again in the corner and another single crochet is around this row will end with a slip stitch to the chain one at the beginning of your row so i already have here two squares attached to each other again i end my borders row with a slip stitch to chain one so you gather two squares facing wrong side to each other and you are facing the right side of your granny squares and aligned all the stitches like so because we need to be able to see the stitches front and back loop so we can use them for your single crochet. So first is we will insert our hook into the most corner stitch of your granny square all loop. So we're using all loop this time and pull a yarn and secure that yarn and then in your first granny square use the back loop in that square and then in the second square you have to use the front loop okay so that's the front loop there for the second square okay so these loops are close to each other single crochet Again, back loop of my first square and then the front loop of my second square okay so in short the loops that is close to each other we will be using them so you can see that there's another loop here that we didn't use okay that's why we need to align the squares stitches so we can see the loop easily Again, this is the back loop of my first square. This is the front loop of my second square. So continue the single crochet back loop, front loop until you've reached into your second corner. Okay, so it's just single crochet, back loop, and then front loop. Okay, and single crochet. You'll just have to find that loop to insert your hook. And now we reach the second corner of your granny square. This time we will use all the loop, okay? So insert your hook using all the loops of that stitch and pull a yarn and make a single crochet. Then we can cut off that yarn and attach another square in the other side. So it should look like this. So as you can see, there's a ridges in between the two squares. Okay, so continue the pattern of your single crochet, back loop, and front loop until all the six granny squares is attached to each other. The first row is already attached to each other. And again, we will just continue the single crochet, back loop, front loop until you have all your six granny squares attached to each other. And I have here my last square and I'm in the end. So I obviously need to use all the loop this time because that's how the pattern goes. The last stitch of your granny square is single crochet. So I have here all my granny squares, six granny squares attached and then another six here. Again, just add more squares if you're making it for a size up. This time, we will align all the granny squares and we will single crochet this part here. Again, the same method of single crochet, front loop, back loop. That's why we need to align these stitches again to each other. So start with the most corner. I will use a different yarn here just for the tutorial purposes so you guys can see. Again, find the back loop and front loop of your granny squares and we will attach this from here all the way here. So I have here my front loop and this one is a back loop of my second granny square. 
Again, back loop of your first granny square and the front loop of your second granny square. And make a single crochet. Again, the back loop of your first granny square and then the front loop of your second granny square and make a single crochet. Okay? So as you can see, that's the loop. The back loop of the first granny square near you. And the front loop of the second square that's a bit further from you. You'll just have to continue and repeat the same procedures of um, connecting two squares. This time we are connecting all the six granny squares. Okay, so this is the front and this is the back and make a single crochet. So we have to continue that until we reach in the corner and the corner is a bit different. So when you reach the first corner, you will use all so single crochet the last stitch. And again, the first stitch of your next granny squares, you also have to use all the loops and make a single crochet. And then continue your pattern of single crochet, back loop, and front loop. Okay, once you already reached into the second group of granny squares, go back to your single crochet, back loop, and front loop. Okay, only in the corners we have to single crochet all the loops. I finish my single crochet back loop front loop from here all the way here. I end in the side. Do not cut it off because we will make a single crochet around your bando panel. Let's start the border. Chain one and single crochet in every stitches around your granny square panel or your bando. Make sure you're working into a direction that the single crochet is facing towards you. single crochet around until you reach here slip stitch to chain one so let's cut off that yarn and this is what our bando or panel looks like okay now if you fold it like this these two ends shouldn't be touching each other now attach your yarn again in the side of your panel secure the yarn and a chain of four this time we're starting the mesh and then skip a stitch chain one skip a stitch and double crochet in the stitch after that so continue your pattern of chain one skip a stitch and double crochet next until you reach at the very end of your panel okay so it should look like this and continue until here so I'm here at the end and double crochet and the very last stitch in the side of your um, panel. So that's what our first row for the mesh should look like. Now chain of four and turn your work and this time we skip the chain one space and straight away put a double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous round. Then chain one and again double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous round. So you repeat this pattern of chain one and double crochet on top of a double crochet until you reach the end. And you have to make a row at least 50 rows of this mesh. So I'm at the end of this row and chain one and again double crochet on top of a double crochet. Then chain one and double crochet on the last stitch. And this is my last row for the mesh bow at the back. And you can wave it at the end of your project. So in total, I have 51 rows and that is for size small enough to make a nice bow at the back. You can always add more rows if you want to. 
and this is what our mesh looks like and repeat this mesh pattern in the other side of your bandeau top and this time tie your mesh and make a bow And this is what it looks like. The reason we use acrylic for this because acrylic gives a nice form to our mesh bow compared to the cotton. And now I have here my sleeves and I figured out by putting two squares in between my two sleeves. So I pretty much just tie the organza ribbon to where my stitch markers for the sleeve is. So as for the back, attach your organza ribbon at the last rows, granny squares, before we started the mesh. Hooked it with my hook and tied it. Again, you can always sew the organza ribbon to your bandeau if you wanted to. So this is what our bandeau looks like with a cute big mesh bow at the back. So you're pretty much done if you just want the bandeau top. But if you want to dress, please continue watching till the end. So this is what the dress looks like. Just added a skirt part to our bandeau and the closure is pretty much your mesh bow. Before we proceed, this is the preview of the skirt or the beginning of making it into a dress. So when you turn around, your mesh bow is your closure and there is an extension or adjustable chain, I called it, at the back. So we will add a chain here at the back to use that as an adjustable and at the same time to connect the window. This must be your waist measurement. It should fit into your waist. So I have here a little prototype that we can use as a skirt or a dress. So I chain from here all the way here. So this is the back edges of your bandeau. Connect or attach your yarn again, depending what color you're using. In my case, I used the black since my skirt is black. And then I chain 15. 15 is for small. And then slip stitch to the other side of your bandeau. Okay, so 15 chain is for small. Again, add more chain if you are making a bigger size and make sure you can squeeze into it when you try to fit in. Okay, so this is the chain, the beginning of your skirt. And then this time, continue your single crochet around the skirt. Okay, so the work this time is in rounds. You will not turn, but instead you are continuously doing a stitches in rounds. So single crochet around, including your chain until you reach into your first single crochet. So I'm here at the end of my last stitch in the chain, and then I slip stitch to my first single crochet. So this is what your first row for the skirt should look like. Again, a preview to my own skirt. That part there is your single crochet. So next row, chain of four, one, two, three, and four, and then triple crochet in the same stitch where your chain four is. So chain four here is considered as a stitch. Now in the next stitch, you have to put two triple crochet in the next stitch. So this second row of your skirt is considered as the increase part, okay? So this is pretty much the only part we will increase. The rest will be normal stitches. So put two triple crochet in the same stitch around your skirt. So I'm here at the end and I will just slip stitch to the chain for the beginning of this row. So this is what your second row should look like, okay? The increase row. So as you can see, it looks like a skirt now. This may be tiny, but yours should be bigger, okay? It's just a prototype since I already made mine. Then chain of four again, and this time another triple crochet in the same stitch where your chain four is. Skip two stitches and then triple crochet two times on the third stitch. So that's one and two. And then chain of two, one and two, and again two triple crochet in the same stitch. So we're doing an open scallop stitch. It should look like this, okay? And again, skip two and make the open scallop stitch in the stitch after you skip. 
Okay, so that's two triple crochet, chain two, and two triple crochet. So instead of using double crochet for open scallop stitch, we're using a triple crochet. Continue until you reach here. So I'm pretty much here at the end and I only have few stitches left. So if I skip, I reach in this stitch here. So just add two triple crochet in the same stitch. And then chain of two and slip stitch to your chain four. So you should end a two triple crochet and a chain two to complete that two triple crochet you started at the beginning. Again, chain of four and triple crochet on top of the triple crochet from the previous round. And this time we will be working in the chain spaces, which is your two chain spaces from the previous round. And put another open scallop stitch there, which is two triple crochet. Chain two and two triple crochet in the same two chain space from the previous round. Okay, so pretty much this is what our row will be in the next rows that's needed for your skirt to have a good length. So I'm already here at the last end and again I have a chain to space at the end of my row. I'll just put two triple crochet in that chain space. Okay, so we started with two triple crochets or chain four and triple crochet and then we end with two triple crochet and a chain two to complete the stitch. Continue your open scallop stitches around the skirt and make it as long as you want it, make it short as you want it. It depends, you can make it as a pea plum, you can make it as a cocktail little dress, you can make it into a ball gown. It's up to you how long you want your dress will be. And that's the end of our tutorial for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It is packed with goodies and lots of styles that you can use in this tutorial. So please do not forget to tag me in my social medias. You can check on me here in my Instagram and my Facebook and also in my Pinterest. And if you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell notification so you will be updated for our future tutorials. So thank you so much everyone for staying and tuning in today i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and i hope to see you again sometime next week goodbye staring out the window reaching for a north star waiting just to wake up from this nightmare where you could be right back in my arms dancing to the limbo